Eric Fisher, tackle, Central Michigan. Right here. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm milking draft content more efficiently than a doctor can milk your prostate perna. Why not reference a dairy farmer? Because I'm a sick man. Today, though, I want to compare arguably the two worst first rounds of the draft over the last 20 years. Diehard NFL fans know a bad first round pick doesn't equate to a bad draft. Rounds two, three, and four are where good teams build empires. Typically, top 10 to 20 level talent is pretty easily identified unless you are drafting in the years 2000 or 2013. Two drafts so bad in the first round, I had to discuss it here on That's Good Sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I make football videos, and if you can tolerate my stupid face, Subscribe. Today's episode is sponsored by buyraycon.com slash that's good, which will save you 15% when you use my link below. When you treat your ears to the delight that is Raycon, you are supporting this channel. You know that, but you might not know that Raycon was co-founded by Ray J and other notables like J.R. Smith and Mike Tyson. Tyson makes sense because I'm pretty sure if I took a Tyson punch to the face, my Raycons would stay in place. Even if my head rolled off my body. That's how comfortably secure they fit into the side of your head. Plus, you get 45 days to test them out and decide if they're right for you. Raycon's wireless earbuds give you six hours of playtime and the freedom to get away from screens or just tune out the noise of your life with their noise isolating fit. I use them to edit, to work out, and to fall asleep with while listening to podcasts. So go to buyraycon.com slash that's good to get 15% off your Raycon order. Busty. That's what I call the first round of the 2013 and 2000 drafts. All time busts. The athletic parents who bang 20 to 22 years prior to those two draft years let the wrong seed slip through. 2013 already showed up in my worst quarterback drafts episode, so it's probably nice for those quarterbacks to see that it wasn't just them. Uh, On the screen right now are the side-by-side lists of each draft. I won't read every name here because that would bore even the fuck out of me. And I love hearing my own voice. So I'll go top 10 for each. 2000, Courtney Brown, LeVar Arrington, Chris Samuels, Peter Warwick, Jamal Lewis, Corey Simon, Thomas Jones, Plaxico Burris, Brian Urlacher, and Travis Taylor. 2013 had Eric Fisher, number one, Luke Jokel, Dion Jordan, Lane Johnson, Ezekiel Anza, Barkevius Mingo, Jonathan Cooper, Tavon Austin, D. Milliner, and Chance Warmack. So to start, let's compare the two first overall pick in first overall versus first overall. 2000, the Browns select Courtney Brown. 2013, the Chiefs select Eric Fisher. How pissed must Chiefs fans have been after the 2012 season when they sucked hard enough to get for the first time in their lives the number one overall pick? and the best player on the board was a left tackle from Central Michigan. Eric Fisher had a slow start to his career, but ended up being a pretty good player who lasted eight seasons before being released this offseason due to injury and a sudden realization in Kansas City that tackles are no longer necessary for an Andy Reid offensive scheme. Fisher never developed into a Joe Thomas type player, uh, which you want from that top spot in the draft. Then again, there was no franchise quarterback, just a dealer's choice between Eric Fisher and Luke Jokel, which between those two, Kansas City chose correctly. The Chiefs and the Jaguars took those two guys one and two, and it turns out the third tackle taken in the top five was Lane Johnson, three-time pro bowler and an all-pro, so that's got a sting. For the Browns, they thought they were getting a stud defensive end out of Penn State. In fact, the first two players taken in the draft were Courtney Brown and LeVar Arrington, two front seven players from Penn State. 
the Browns would have been better off taking Arrington, who wasn't a slam dunk, but was a three-time pro bowler who played seven years. Courtney Brown was basically a workout warrior whose ultimate destiny was to become a solid rotational player, notching just 19 and a half sacks in his career, which lasted just six seasons. Now, Courtney Brown ends up being the lesser of the first two overalls uh, and was traded to the Broncos in 2005 along with three other Browns defensive linemen in Gerard Warren, Ebenezer Ekubon, and Michael Myers. You may remember them as the Browncos. So point for the 2000 draft as the worst first overall. The worst pick in the draft. Now it's hard to go against Courtney Brown considering he was the first pick in 2000, but if I'm going to go a little outside of the box here, the worst pick in the 2000 draft was probably Chiefs wide receiver, Sylvester Morris who never even hit 700 yards receiving in his career. Interesting enough, both 2000 and 2013 included a Sylvester in the first round. Uh, Denver picked Sylvester Williams in 2013, a solid, unspectacular player who had his best year in 2015 when the Broncos won the Super Bowl. The giant selection of Ron Dane was close here, but this was during an era where fat running backs thrived. Jerome Bettis had just notched his fifth consecutive thousand yard season, and had Eddie Lacy been born 13 years earlier, he could have been a first rounder too in 2000. Instead, he was a second rounder in 2013. The worst pick, though, from the 2013 draft was DJ Hayden, who the Raiders picked with the 12th overall selection. Hayden was a massive reach at the time, coming out of Houston, but then you look at his 4.3840 time and it makes perfect sense that the Raiders took him. Hayden did close to nothing in Oakland, playing just 40% of the defensive snaps his first two seasons, but turned into a solid nickel corner in Jacksonville. Point for the year 2000. Now the best pick in the draft in the year 2000? Brian Erlacher, who went ninth overall to the Bears. Anytime you can pick a Hall of Famer it's a home run. If you can pick a Hall of Famer in one of the worst drafts of all time, it's even more important. It's basically like trying to find a needle in a stack of hay, in a stack of hay that's already been shit out by all the cows. Now, Erlacher was one of the great bald players of all time, which made it all the more treacherous when he got fake hair after he retired. He also brought the Bears to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman, still one of the great achievements of the 21st century. A close second was John Abraham in this draft, who the Jets took. Uh, he played 15 seasons for the Jets, Falcons, and Cardinals, and finished his career with 133.5 sacks. That's 13th all-time sandwiched between Lawrence Taylor and Jared Allen and a case can be made for Abraham to be in the Hall of Fame as well. 2013, the best player taken was DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver, 27th overall, who the Texans, of course, took. Now, there's exactly one Hall of Famer in each of these two drafts. Uh, the second most productive player from the first round of the 2013 draft is guard Kyle Long. And I kind of disqualify him since he already retired and then unretired once. That's a no-no in my book. And honorable mention from this draft goes to Ziggy Anza, who was a pretty good football player, but inexplicably wore 3D glasses to the draft. Sorry, Ziggy. Not even those will make Roger Goodell look like a real human man. Let me put it like this. There were basically 30 players from the first round of the 2013 draft that Bill O'Brien would have traded DeAndre Hopkins for. So this is a point for... 2013. Now let's examine the what the fuck pick. Yes, the year 2000 was the year the Oakland Raiders spent the 17th overall pick on Florida State Sebastian Janikowski, the fat Polish bald kicker who once attempted a 76 yard field goal. Only the Raiders would think they were that much smarter than everyone else. The next two picks were Chad Pennington, who could have been their franchise quarterback at the time after Rich Gannon fell off a cliff. And the pick right after was Sean Alexander, who set the single season touchdown record in 2005. So Janikowski 
is the what the fuck pick there. The what the fuck pick for 2013, also a foreigner. And not to sound xenophobic, but I'm starting to wonder if you should stay away from Europeans who went to Florida State. This time it was German-born defensive end Bjorn Werner, selected by the Colts with the 24th pick. Another excellent pick by Ryan Grigson, who followed this one up by picking Philip Dorsett the next year. Uh, Grigson chose Bjorn Werner over DeAndre Hopkins, who went three picks later. And one pick later was corner Xavier Rhodes, who like Bjorn, also went to Florida State. So Grigson maybe had the right school, but still selected the wrong freaking player. Both of these picks earn an emphatic what the fuck, but I give the point to 2013, since Janikowski did have a very good career. Uh, that ties us up at two points apiece. The next evaluation is, who the hell is this guy? 2000, we have R.J. Soward, 29th overall pick by Jacksonville. Who the hell is this guy? His name is R.J., but he spells it out like J like Jay Cutler. It makes no sense. Soward only played one season at wide receiver in Jacksonville, catching 14 passes for 154 yards and one touchdown before getting basically suspended out of the league. 2013, the one that stands out to me is the ninth overall pick by the Jets. D. Milner, defensive back, Alabama. That ended up only playing three seasons in the NFL. I don't want to call him a bust because he had a nice rookie season before being ruined by injuries. And the Jets are actually a great example as to why stockpiling draft picks isn't a sure thing. In 2000, they hit. They did great with Sean Ellis, John Abraham, and Chad Pennington getting the best QB in the first round. But then in 2013 with D. Milliner and Sheldon Richardson, who was just cut this week by the Browns, shows that didn't work out. In 2013, the Rams took Tavon Austin before DeAndre Hopkins. Washington took LeVar Arrington before Brian Erlacher. Both hard, hard pills to swallow. But I'm gonna give the point to the year 2000. The most talent taken in later rounds. Some of the players not taken in the first round of the 2013 draft will make you laugh. <laughs> The second round was the money round in 2013 with players like Zach Ertz, Darius Slay, Gio Mustache Bernard, Robert Woods, Le'Veon Bell, and even Jamie Collins all coming off the board. Then the Chiefs grabbed Travis Kelsey with the first pick in the third round. Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, stupidly fell to the third because, again, the NFL still treated weed-related incidents like murder crimes. Well, worse than murder if you throw in Ray Lewis. Logan Ryan, Keenan Allen, also third rounders in 2013. Now, 2000 had some productive players in the second round. Uh, wide receiver Jerry Porter had 31 career touchdowns. Mike Brown had 20 career picks for the Bears and might have won Rookie of the Year had it not gone to his teammate Brian Erlacher. So the Bears did very well defensively. Plus, Mike Brown returned two picks in the following season for consecutive wins in overtime. He finished his career with seven TDs, which is pretty high for a safety, was a first-team All-Pro in 2001, and maybe one of the great forgotten safeties of the last 20 years. So the year 2000, gets the point here because the talent pool was still pretty shallow outside of the first. Then we have each draft's bright spots. The year 2000 did have a great trio of running backs to be selected. Jamal Lewis went fifth, Thomas Jones seventh, and Sean Alexander 19th. Lewis and Jones both finished their careers with over 10,000 rushing yards, and Sean Alexander, who I already mentioned, set the record for most touchdowns in a season, rushing touchdowns before suffering the Madden curse and eventually watching his record fall to LaDainian Tomlinson. Now, 2013 did provide a nice trio of offensive linemen. Again, Eric Fisher, Lane Johnson, and Kyle Long, but it's hard to not notice the other linemen selected were pretty big busts. Luke Jokel played in just 50 games. Jonathan Cooper taken seventh by the Cardinals, just 46 games. Chance Warmack, DJ Fluker, Justin Pugh, all guys who stunk. <laughs> all guys that would not go in the first round in a redraft. 
Factor in great offensive linemen are not sexy to talk about, and 2013 is maybe the most boring first round the NFL has ever produced. So the least bright, bright spots go to the year 2013. The 2000 draft had 14 pro bowlers, two players that played for Jerry Sandusky, one 2000 yard rusher in Jamal Lewis, one self-inflicted bullet wound from Plaxico Burris, and a Hall of Famer, Erlacher. 2013 had 12 pro bowlers, and likely one Hall of Famer in DeAndre Hopkins, one of the greatest names ever in Barkevius Mingo, one D, two DJs, and one EJ. One thing that sets these two drafts apart from the rest are the lack of quarterbacks. Usually quarterbacks get drafted early, regardless, like in 1999 when QBs went one, two, and three. But in both of these drafts, you didn't get a QB taken in the top 10, which is pretty damning. I'd definitely rather have Chad Pennington over EJ Manuel though, and I guarantee I can throw a ball further than Chad Pennington. Tom Brady was of course taken in the sixth round of the 2000 draft, but since we're only evaluating the first round, I proudly announce the year 2000 was the worst draft since the year 2000. Congratulations to triple zeros. You're a triple zero on the official judges scoreboard. Thanks for watching. That's good sports. Draft milking, milking the draft episode series. If you want more draft videos, you can click on the screen now.